President Moon Jae-in of South Korea left and North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-un, near the end of their summit meeting Friday at the truce village of Panmunjom. Pool Photo Seoul, South Korea, in gushing coverage, North Korea's main newspaper devoted four of its six pages on Saturday to the summit meeting the day before between Kim Jong-un, the North's leader, and Moon Jae-in, the South's. It brightened its usually drab pages with 62 color photographs from the historic event. It even printed the leader's joint declaration professing a goal of denuclearization on the Korean peninsula. But, like other state-run North Korean news media, the newspaper, Rodong Sinmun, gave no hint to its readers whether Mr. Kim would genuinely consider giving up his nuclear weapons, or what he might demand in return. Rather, it focused on Mr. Kim's new diplomatic turn. With his boundlessly noble love for the nation and with his sophisticated political skills, he has laid the groundwork for a turning point in North-South Korean relations, the propaganda-filled Rodong said. Watching news of the inter-Korean summit meeting on Friday in Seoul, South Korea. Mr. Kim said the two sides had agreed to practical steps so that all Koreans could live in a peaceful land without war. Joseph Chung, Agence France Press, Getty Images The coverage highlighted what the inter-Korean meeting glaringly lacked. However positive the goals described in the three-page agreement the leaders signed, the critical question remained, does Mr. Kim intend to bargain away his nuclear weapons, or are his recent head-spinning diplomatic overtures aimed only at softening his image and easing sanctions against his impoverished country? Mr. Kim will almost certainly be pressed to answer that more clearly when he meets President Trump in late May or early June. In the joint declaration, which Ro Dong printed at the bottom of its third page, the two sides confirmed common goal of realizing, through complete denuclearization, a nuclear-free Korean peninsula, a commitment North Korea has made before and then flouted by conducting six nuclear tests. The North Korean news media listed denuclearization as the last of three major agenda items from the summit meeting at the border village of Panmunjom, unlike the South Korean government, which cited it first. The North's coverage described extensively how Mr. Kim was spearheading efforts to open an era of national reconciliation and solidarity, and peace and prosperity, on the divided peninsula. MRKIM and Mr. Moon signing their joint declaration. MRKIM never uttered the word denuclearization in public on Friday. Pool photo still, its coverage of the summit meeting reconfirmed North Korea's dramatic shift from raising tensions through weapons tests to creating a reconciliatory mood through high-profile meetings that would have been unthinkable just several months ago. Skeptics say Mr. Kim's goal remains to be accepted as a nuclear power. He is merely trying to improve ties with South Korea to steer it further from the United States and to escape sanctions that are increasingly hurting the North Sea economy, they say. Kim intends to win diplomatic recognition, a peace treaty and economic aid from Washington and its allies, as South Korean officials hope he does, trading away his nuclear arsenal as his only bargaining chip. He cannot reveal his hand too soon, they say. South Korean officials say they have heard directly from Mr. Kim a willingness to denuclearize. But Mr. Kim never uttered the word denuclearization in public on Friday during the heavily choreographed events, which featured hand-holding and hugging, jokes and smiles, but produced vague pledges to seek nuclear disarmament and a peace treaty. After signing their agreement, Mr. Kim and Mr. Moon stood before cameras, Mr. Kim's first debut to outside news media and his first internationally broadcast news conference. M.R. Moon said he and Mr. Kim had agreed to closely cooperate for complete denuclearization. But Mr. Kim said only that the two sides had agreed to practical steps so that all Koreans could live in a peaceful land without war, Mr. Kim repeatedly complained on Friday that previous deals with South Korea and the United States had all collapsed. Such an attempt to convey his wariness could mean protracted negotiations with Washington, which seeks a quick dismantlement, analysts said. Alexander Vershbau, a former American ambassador to Seoul, expressed some caution, it remains to be seen what Kim Jong-un's commitment to denuclearization means in concrete terms, whether it foreshadows agreement to President Trump's demand for the rapid and verifiable elimination of the North's nuclear weapons, delivery systems and infrastructure, or whether the North envisages a drawn-out process tied to potentially unacceptable demands that the United States withdraw its forces from the South or provide immediate sanctions relief, while the North's nuclear threat remains in place, he said by email. The prospects of carrying out the inter-Korean agreement, which also called for the easing of military tensions along the Korean border and large South Korean investments to improve the North's road and train systems, will depend on whether Mr. Kim and Mr. 
Trump can reach a deal to dismantle North Korea's nuclear weapons, said Chung Seong Chong, a senior North Korea specialist at the Sejang Institute in Sungnam, South Korea. The coming summit between North Korea and the United States is likely to decide the future of the Korean Peninsula, Mr.